Good evening. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord on this evening. Praise God for another opportunity to be in his presence. I will be reading from the book of Romans, and I will be coming from the 10th chapter. The book is Romans, the chapter is 10, and I will be reading verses 1 through 15. Amen. And could you all stand for the reading of the word of God? In reverence to him, praise God. Romans 10, 1 through 15. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith Speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach, except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of, God, of good things. 
Praise God. His word is already blessed. So we thank the Lord Amen. for the scripture reading. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I thank God for this day, for everything that he's doing. I thank God for our pastor, his wife, my St. Stephen's family, our, our guest speaker, his church, and just everyone that's participating in this revival on today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight saying thank you, O oh God. Thank you, 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 Lord, for all your many blessings. Thank you, oh God, for what you're doing in this season. Thank you, oh God, that please don't do it without me. Father God, we come tonight, oh God, standing in the gap, touching and agreeing, standing on the wall, oh God, thanking you for another blessed day. Thanking you for the first night of revival, oh God. Father God, we say thank you, God, and we say hallelujah for what you want to do in this place. Father God, we lay ourselves at the altar tonight. Father God, and we say hey, have your way. Have thine way in us tonight. Oh God, we invite your Holy Spirit in this house. We invite your presence in this place. And we say, move like you want to move, oh God. Father God, we say, we just thank you, oh God, for your blessings, oh God. Thank you for what you're doing in this month, in this season, oh God. This is our youth month, oh God. This is our time of revival, oh God. A time to be restored, a time to be revived, a time to be made alive again. Lord, we call in on your name, oh God. We say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah in advance for what you want to do, oh God. Now, Lord, hallelujah, come on in this house, oh God. Come on in this place, oh God. Move in this place, oh God. We lay every burden down right now. We cast it down right now anything that would try to exalt itself against the move of God we cast down these vain imaginations oh God we cast down every dead and dull spirit oh God and we cast down every kindness oh God and we say we got a hunger and a thirst for you tonight oh God to do something fresh to do something new to do something powerful oh God give us a fresh anointing give us a fresh anointing give us new power new grace and new mercy to fulfill the assignment father God we thank you Lord we thank you Lord and we thank you Lord we open up our mouths right now we open up our hearts right now we lift our hands oh God we move our bodies oh God we rock side to side oh God we crying and calling on your name oh God saying Lord stop by here God Lord see about me God Lord don't let my children die Lord let them go to school safe Lord bring them back home safe Lord let them get a hunger for you God Lord let them thirst for righteousness God Lord let them see us moving and working for you God Lord let our let our moving and our being not be in vain, oh God. Let our serving you not be in vain. Let our praising you not be in vain. Let our sacrifice not be in vain. Oh Lord, we need you. Oh Lord, I need you. I need you in my home, oh God. I need you in our bodies, oh God. We need you, we need you, we need you, God. Hallelujah, God. We need you, Lord. We want you, Lord. Just, Lord, do a revival inside of us, oh God. Do a revival inside of St. Stephen, oh God. Then let it go into our homes and our neighborhoods, oh God. And then into our city, oh God. Have your way tonight, God. Holy Spirit, fall fresh in this place. Don't let us leave here like we came. Let us leave full and drunken in the spirit. Let us leave full and praising and worshiping you. Let us get a fresh prophecy of what you want to do in our lives, oh God. Do something fresh, God. Do something new, God. Do something money came back, God. Do something supernatural, God. Do something miraculous, God. Do something to blow our minds, oh God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And 
we say thank you God we say thank you God we say thank you God we clap in your presence we clap in your presence we open up our mouths we say thank you God hallelujah 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 thank you God in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen and amen Let us say amen. amen. Let us say amen again. Amen. Say it like you mean it. Amen. amen. God is good. God is good. God is good. God is good. Amen. We truly thank God, amen, for that fervent prayer. Amen. By our, our dearly beloved sister. We thank her for her fervent prayer. Amen. Uh, we thank God for all of you that are here on tonight. Uh, this is our first night of revival. Amen. If you don't mind, look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Amen. Say, neighbor, did you come to have revival? Amen. Amen. That, that neighbor was a little too quiet. You might, you might need to dismiss yourself from them. Amen. Look at your next neighbor. Say, neighbor, did you come to have a revival? Amen. If they quiet, you might need to get up and move to a whole other seat. Amen. Tell them, say, I belong to the noisy crew. Say, I shout when I get happy. That's what saints ought to do. Amen. We truly thank God for all of you tonight. Amen. On this revival, first night of revival. Amen. Revival. We all need a revival. Amen. Amen. Revive the saints. Amen. Save the sinners. And open a way for the wayward child, man, to walk back in. Amen. That, that's what we all need. Amen. We thank God, amen, for tonight. Amen. The first night of revival, our youth revival. And it's not only for our youth, it's for any and every one of us. Amen. Because we need a reviving. Amen. After all, so much is going on in this world. Amen. We thank God for you, all of you. We want to extend the invitation. Amen. You know, when I was a lad of a boy, amen, we, we, amen, we sat on what we call the morning bench. And, and folk don't do the morning bench no more. And we done got a little too uppity for the morning bench. But, but me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay with the old school. Amen. We're going to set this front bench up here to the side. Amen. For the morning bench. Amen. That front seat will be the morning bench. Amen. Anybody that want to give their life to Christ. Amen. This week. Amen. You can sit there on the morning bench. Amen. We need to bring back, amen, that old time way. Amen. If it worked for Big Mama, if it worked for my mama, amen, if it worked for me, it'll work for you. Amen. Thank God, amen, for the morning bench. Amen. We, uh, we want to extend the invitation. We know that Jesus extended the invitation over 2,000 years ago when he said, whosoever will, let him come. And the thing I like most about what he was saying, he was saying, I don't care what you did last night. I don't care what you did yesterday. I, I don't care what you did even while you pulled up on this parking lot. He said, I don't care about that. I don't care. I don't care. He said, and what I like about the B part of that, that verse, he said that when you come, I would in no wise cast you out. And, and see, that's the kind of God we serve. He don't do us like we do our, our other people. And I'm grateful for that. Amen. I truly thank God for that. So we, tonight we're going to extend the invitation. Amen. If you, you want to give God a chance, you've tried the rest. Try the best. Amen. Now try the best. Amen. We truly thank God for all of you that are here. I want to do this before we go any further. Amen. I want all the preachers and pastors that are out in the audience, amen, amen. I want to extend the invitation for you to come up front and sit here on the, in the pulpit with us. Is, is that Dr. Hall back there? Hey, Dr. Hall, I see you trying to hide back there, great doctor. Amen. Come on up here with us, man. Come on, come on, be a part of us. Amen. Amen. Come on up and be a part. Any more preachers and pastors in the house? Amen. Any, any more preachers and pastors in the house? Amen. We want to extend the invitation, amen, to you. Because, hey, we need all the help we can get up here. 
Amen. We truly thank God for all of you on tonight. Amen. Any more preachers and pastors? Amen. Any more preachers and pastors? Amen. Bootleg, shade tree. Amen. 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 We, amen. We, we come to have a good time tonight. Amen. We want, we want to come to have a good time. Amen. We truly thank God for all of you that are here. Amen. We in for a high time. Amen. It ain't going to take us long to do what we need to do and get out of here. Amen. We're going to next have a, uh, I tell you what we'll do we, since our youth is doing the singing, we, we're going to go and let's skip over this next one, this next song. Let's go and get the offering out of the way. And then I'll do the, they haven't done the welcome yet. Okay, well, all right, we'll do the welcome. Y'all let you know. They'll let you know. See how fast I'm driving the car? You better put your seatbelt on. Amen. You better put your seatbelt on when I'm up driving. Amen. We'll do the welcome by one of our youth. Amen. Let's give them a hand as they come. It's on you. It's, it's on. Here, she can get mine. Here. Good evening. Will all visitors please stand? And our pastor. That's the heart. Amen. 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 We thank you for coming to our youth revival today. We welcome you to come back tomorrow and Wednesday night. Thank you. Amen. Give me your sister a hand. Amen. 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 We thank God for our youth. Amen. They've been doing a splendid job all month long. And our youth been awesome all month long. Amen. Amen. We're gonna we're gonna do this where if your name is not on the program, I just added it. Uh, you know how us is be. Well, you didn't put my name on the program, but I just put your name on the program. So what we're gonna do now is pick up this offering. Let's go and dig deep in our pockets. Amen. And let's get our offering out of the way. Let's get our offering. Amen. I, I need you to get past the, the, the coins, the nickels, and the dimes. I need you to get past those fellas tonight. Tell them we're going to use y'all next week sometime. But this week, we're going to get past them. Amen. And I need you to even slide that old boy named Dollar out of the way. Slide Dollar out of the way. Slide Mr. Dollar out of the way. I really don't want five dollars. You know, he, he do good every now and then. But five and ten, hey amen, we can slide him over. I'm looking for Mr. 20. That's who I'm looking for. I'm looking for that guy. Hey amen. If there ain't way possible, I can get some more folk to help me with Mr. 20. Hey, hey amen. I need some help with Mr. 20. Hey amen. Let's, let's try to bring him in strong tonight. Hey amen. If you don't have him, hey amen, give your best offering. Amen. Give your best offering. Amen. And God will bless you bountifully. Amen. Give your best offering. Amen. Amen. Get your gifts together. Get them in your hand. Get your gifts together. Dr. Hall, if you don't mind, would you come, amen, pray over this offering. Amen. Before we do it. Let us pray. God, our Father, we give you thanks on tonight for being God alone. We thank you for this revival. We thank you for every person that is here, that's on the way, and that will experience and that's watching via Facebook. We pray your hand of blessing now upon every giver, every gift, sanctified now, multiplied, that it may be meet for your use. We ask that you bless these youth, bless this pastor, this entire congregation. We pray, God, that none would suffer loss in their giving and that you're able to do it exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything we can ask or even think. We give you glory now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Get your gifts together. Bring your gifts. Amen. Get your gifts. Amen. We're in the hand of our ushers. Yes, sir. Thank 
thank you. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Has everyone given that had a desire to give? Has everyone given? I don't want anyone to leave. The pastor didn't give me a chance to give. Amen. We want to open that extend that invitation for everyone. Amen. That want to give. Amen. We're moving right along. Amen. Uh, you guys have heard had the hors d'oeuvres. Amen. You had, amen, the, 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 the side pieces. Amen. Now it's time to get down to the meat of the matter. Amen. amen. We have a young man, amen, that's well qualified, amen, to preach God's word. Amen. How do you know, Pastor? I've been knowing this young man for over probably 40 years now. Uh, I knew him through high school, through middle school, amen. As a matter of fact, I went to school with him. And I, I'm going to just go ahead on and tell off on myself. I was, I, I, I was kind of bad at school. And any of y'all looking at me, some of y'all were bad at school, it's still bad. Amen, amen. But I always watched him. He would always sit back and just watch me cut up. Amen. We was in chorus together. Uh, he, was, he could sing like a mockingbird. Amen. And, and uh, I, I would say this. Uh, me and some more fellas, we were selling candy, and uh, somehow or another, the candy ended up a little short. When it's time to turn it in, uh, uh, we, we, our hands got a little sticky. And in other words, we, we took what, what, what we didn't pay for. Don't y'all judge me now. I, I, I thought y'all going to be real tonight. It's revival, right? We need reviving. So I uh, me and a couple more fellas, we cut up, we, we clown in chorus, and, but this joker here would just sit back and just look at us and shake his head. And I knew then something was special about him, and I would say to myself, I'm glad he didn't do it because that's more for me to get, you know. But, but I thank God now that, amen, that, that I know better now, amen, and God has us on the same team. Hey Amen. We're on the same battlefield now. And I've been knowing this young man for many, many years. Been very quiet, very humble. Uh, well qualified to preach. Hey Amen. Very well qualified to sing as well. Hey Amen. He's the proud pastor. Hey Amen. Of Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church up in Dyersburg, Tennessee. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. I, I, I preached there, I think, a couple weeks ago. Hey Amen. And hey Amen. They, they showed me so much love and so much kindness. Amen. And I would not dare not return the favor, amen, in doing the same thing. I've learned this in life. Uh, in order to gain a friend, you first must show yourself friendly. Amen. And I will say that, man, that he's, he's been a friend to me. Very, very kind-hearted young man, amen. A, a, a pastor, great pastor, great husband as well. First lady, wave your hand. Wave your hand, first lady. Let these women know that's your man. Speak up, child. Speak up. All right, now. Amen. Amen. We, we're very grateful for him, Amy. He's of age. Amen. He's, he's of age. He's been preaching many years. Amen. Pastor many years as well. Amen. He, he, he's of age. He can speak for him on self. He preach his own preach. And well qualified to sing his own song. Amen. Time that I'm using, amen, he could be using that time as well. Amen. After the choir come, amen, with a song of their choice, 
The next voice we will hear is none other than proud pastor of Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church, Diasbury, Tennessee. Amen. My friend, my brother, Dr. David Hollett. Amen. I want us to get our hands together. Amen. Point at him and say, preach, preacher. Amen. You got three nights of this, Doc. And then you pack it up getting out of here. Amen. Amen. After the choir have a selection of their chores, the next voice you will hear the last speaker for the hour. Amen. God bless you.
those words came from the mouths of babes. For if you're happy, you ought to say amen. amen. It's so good to be here tonight, to be here for these three nights, if it be the Lord's will, and um, to share with you a word from the Lord. I'm thankful to Pastor Harvey for this opportunity to call upon me in such an hour as this. I was so happy to be able to look out and see so many of Pilgrim Rest. Amen. 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 I also see some more friends. Amen. Some more family. Amen. That are here tonight to share in this revival. I ask, I, oh, pardon me, I want to thank God for our pastors and our ministers, the Grace Dorosco. We, we're so thankful for them. Um, they had great hospitality when my wife and I pulled up on the grounds. Amen. Our brother here met us before we could get out of the car. Amen. Helping us out of the car and grabbing things to help us along the way. And certainly, we may not have to have that, but we're thankful when we do. Mama told me years ago, she said, boy, nobody has to be good to you. And when they do, it don't have to be to you. Amen. This, this group of young folk are singing so beautiful. Amen. Amen. I asked the Lord, what would he have me to talk about? and what he would have me to preach tonight. And uh, when I came through the door, the young lady was already reading the scripture. And it's found in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses one through four. And when you have it, say amen. Now we may go back to this book do, throughout the week, so I'll put a mark there. But tonight I want to deal with four verses. Right. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Amen. Amen. I want to thank God for some special guests, uh, Sister and Pastor Williams. Amen who uh, co-worker with my wife, amen, and her husband is here, amen, with her, and uh, thank them for coming out and sharing in this revival. you find these words recorded, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Yes. But they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, yes. have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Uh -huh. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness yes. to everyone who believes. I want to stop right there. I want to ask you a question tonight. Is your zeal according to knowledge? Is your zeal 
according to knowledge. Let us bow, turn to God our Father, I thank you for this time and this opportunity to be able to stand here and speak a few words that have already been spoken. I pray, Father, that you would speak for me, to me, and through me. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength. You are my redeemer. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. Is your zeal according to knowledge? Paul, as he writes chapter 10 of this letter, he writes this letter to the Jews which were in Rome. And he reaffirmed that he cares about the Israelites uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. and that he cares about their souls being saved. Y'all just pray with me for a little while. And while there was no doubt in Paul's mind about them being eagerly devoted to God, they were devoted by their own rules and regulations. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'll say that again because you missed it. Paul had no doubt about their devotion, but he said, I find that you are devoted by your own rules and your own regulations. These people had ignored God and have made up their mind and their own way to live their lives. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to pause here and tell us that devotion is not enough. Their husbands and wives who live together for years and never truly know one another because they have refused to know one another according to knowledge. Some people say, well, how is that possible, Pastor, for somebody to live with somebody for years and, and not know them? Have you ever uh, uh, seen folk who look like they're listening? But they're really not paying you any attention. Truly listening to the concerns of one another will cause us at some point to know each other and knowing each other according to knowledge is far different than any kind of devotion. Paul in chapter 9 and this chapter in chapter 11 is addressing his concerns for the Israelites. They were God's chosen people, and Paul himself was a Jew. And he desired fervently for his own people, Israel, souls to be saved. He writes this letter to combat the slander of the competing Jewish authorities. These competing authorities uh, have claimed that since Paul preached grace, that what he was preaching uh, was that it glorified God to live a sinful life. Uh, they, 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 they argued that God actually wanted us to live by the Old Testament law. And Paul, however, addresses this foolishness by saying, uh, 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 are y'all praying with me tonight? By saying, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge. So who was the them that Paul was talking about? He makes it clear in chapter 9 of, of Romans and verse 31. He says, but Israel, 
which followed after the law of righteousness has not obtained to the law of righteousness. He said you have been following after uh, uh, by way of the law, you haven't obtained it yet. He said you've been following after something you ain't caught up with. Do I have a witness in here? You are still not in good standing with God. And my sisters and brothers, I think every church experienced this. I think that there are some folk who really have intensity in being in church. I, I believe that there are some folk that will beat you there. But I believe that if you follow them closely, that their devotion is to themselves. Really not to God. Do I have a witness in here? Because when your devotion is to God, you give of yourself. Even if it takes more than what you're willing to give. Do I have a witness in here? And so Paul says to them, in my teaching of grace, I am not granting permission to sin. No, 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 no. I'm not granting permission to sin. Paul says, all of you, are, all you're doing is slandering the intention of the gospel message. All you're doing is trying to tell down what I'm trying to share with people that grace has come unmerited. You haven't done nothing to deserve it, but God gave it to you because he loved you. Do I have a witness in here? And, and what you're preaching makes no sense because when a man really know God by faith, he'll have some works to show his grief. Do I have a witness in here? And so he addresses this idea of what they were really doing to him in Romans chapter 3 and verse 8. And not rather as we be slanderously reported. This is Paul talking. In verse 8 of chapter 3. And, and so some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come. <laughs> uh, and, and it goes on, what shall we conclude then? Stay with me a little while. Do we have any advantage? No, not at all. He said, for we have already made the charge that Jews and Gentiles alike are all under the power of sin. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. He ain't through. He ain't through. He says, their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and mercy mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. He said, you say I'm wrong. He said, you tell me I'm preaching the wrong thing. Well, why is what you've been preaching not changing your own life? Oh, y'all ain't going to pray with me in here. You telling me I'm preaching the wrong stuff? Then why ain't you taking what you said right and using it for your own? He wasn't through with him. He wasn't through with him. He says, there's no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law. Yeah, yeah. So that every mouth may be silenced yeah, yeah. and the whole world held accountable to God. Yeah. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by works of the law. Yeah. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sins. Yeah. Y'all come on, stay with me. I'm going to go back and explain it. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. Paul said, I ain't by myself. I'm telling you, it's in the book. And if you read the book, you'll find out that you can't make it by works alone.
He says, for all have sinned <laughs> and come short of the glory of God. And all are justified freely. Uh-oh, here it go. This is where you're trying to get to. They're justified freely by his grace. Paul said, that's what I'm preaching. He said, what I got, I got it free. I didn't do nothing to deserve. And I want to tell you, if you're in the position you're in today and you think you deserve to be there, you're already a fool. And I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but I want to tell you that all of my righteousness is as filthy rags as his presence. And oh, I'm like a sheep headed to the slaughter. And the only reason why I didn't make it there was because behold, the Lamb of God. Yeah. Yeah. It takes away the sins of the world. I wish y'all would help me preach here. So Paul says to them, the road of the law that you travel is going to lead you to nowhere. Yeah, through the law, we become conscious of what is sinful. He said, we find out by the law because the law to the latter tells me what is right, but it don't show me how to do it. Y'all ain't going to talk with me. Oh, y'all come on, pray with me. All it is a reminder of what's right and what's wrong, but that ain't helping me none when it comes to me doing it. <laughs> Paul moves over there to chapter 7 and he said, look, he said, something going on in me. He said, something going on in me. There's a war going on in this body. He said, the good that I would allow, I do not. And the evil that I would not allow, that I find myself doing. Paul said, I discovered there's something going on. He said, there's a law that every time I desire to do good, Evil. Somebody shout evil. Evil is present with me. And I discovered that's why folk can get up and make great declarations. That's why folk would come to the church, join the church, get wet with water, and go right back out the door. Because they got a good intention. But good intention ain't going to get you to heaven. You must be born. Y'all ain't going to play with me. Ah, I feel like I'm at home. Well, y'all let me preach here for a little while. And so Paul says, my message, my message is not whether the Jew or the Gentile is better. But we all better embrace the fulfillment of the law. And the fulfillment of the law, you already killed it. Oh, y'all ain't going to play with me. Christ in human flesh died right in your hand. You killed the one that was the lamb for the atonement of your sin. The person of the Lord Jesus Christ whose blood shed it on the cross has redeemed us by faith. Every believer who will embrace that cross. So Paul has proven that it had always, always been faith in God that brings righteousness. Going all the way back to Abraham. The Bible, and, and the Bible teaches that Abraham lived hundreds of years. And even back before the law was written and given to Moses, it was recorded that Abraham's faith was counted unto righteousness. <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna pray with me. I, I, I believe that that was the experience of Adam and Eve in the garden. That God told them to do something and wanted to see what they do. Y'all ain't gonna come in here. Y'all, y'all come on and, and, and believe that whatever God told them, He would take care of. I think that's what God really trying to get us to. I think God is trying to get us to a relationship with him. That goes beyond having to call somebody to call somebody to call somebody. I believe that God has removed the veil and allowed us now to go into the holiest of holies to have just what mama said, a little talk with Jesus. 
y'all ain't gonna pray with me and she said just a little talk with Jesus We'll make things all right. I'm almost gone. I'm going to cut across the field here in a minute. But Abraham believed God. And his faith was counted unto righteousness. Oh, there's no better position to be in. It's when we can show God that we believe him. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is when Jesus is talking to the Lord and he says to the Lord, Lord, I know you hear me <laughs> when I call on. <laughs> Y'all ain't going to pray with me. I, I, I don't know about you, but when I talk to God, I want to know in my heart that the Lord hear me when I call. <laughs> you know, Jesus had no doubt. He said, Lord, I know that thou heareth me when I pray. Do I have a witness in here? When we call on him, even in the valley or on the mountaintop, as long as we know that he hears us. Israel. Israel saw righteousness apart from faith. For not knowing about God's righteousness yes. and seeking to establish their own. Yes. Uh, their own, they did not subject themselves yes. to the righteousness of God. Yes. And I've discovered this in life when you don't know what to do, you'll make up something to do. Yes. You'll have a witness in here. When you don't know what to do, you'll fake it until you make it. Yes. You'll have a witness in here. But what I like about God is that whatever he told them in secret, he wanted it known on that rooftop. Do I have a witness in here? The Lord knew that what they didn't know could hurt them because they were destroyed by the lack of knowledge. These people had a zeal of God, but they didn't know God like they said they knew. Oh, my sisters and brothers, I've seen some of you a few times, but I can't definitively say that I know you. I know your face. I have memory. I may uh, sometimes remember your name, but I truly can't say I know you. Do I have a witness in here? But when I can say I grew up with you, I grew up in the house with you, do I have a witness in here? And I then can say I know them. Well, I want to take a poll tonight. Anybody in here that can say they really know the Lord? There's a whole lot of folk have heard about it. But I want to know, do you know him according to knowledge? Do I have a witness in here? Yeah, there are a lot of folks shouting out for somebody else's testimony. But no, I believe you ought to graduate from that. I believe every now and then you ought to tell them, let me tell you what the Lord has done. What the Lord has done for me. It's all right for you to tell it, but you can't tell it like I tell it. What the Lord has done for me. You ought to tell your own testimony every now. My sisters and brothers, this has always been the human experience. From day one, Adam and Eve fell to the temptation to gain knowledge. And the knowledge that they gained was independent of the ways of God. And in doing so, they brought death to this entire world. Satan tempted Jesus to do the same thing. But Jesus endured the trial by standing on the word of God. And I hear Jesus saying, yeah, that man shall not live by bread alone. Gregor, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I want to tell you, children.
explaining that it's nothing wrong with bread. But it is something wrong with bread alone. Have I got a witness? Yeah, Jesus, uh, the church is nothing wrong with bread. But uh, the first Adam fell to the temptation of food. But uh, the second Adam passed the test. Over there in Matthew chapter 4. Do I have a witness? An evil heart can always find a way to rationalize what is right. Do I have a witness? Because the end of the law for righteousness is to everyone that believes it. There's a whole lot of people that say they believe God. But their belief is not showing that they're willing to do right. Y'all not going to pray with me. Let me go on and leave y'all alone tonight. But the law is no longer the avenue for righteousness. Because it, it is the end of the law. Yeah, what was he saying? Jesus put an end to the law. I hear John saying, behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Greg, and I want you to know tonight that I'm glad that the Lord took the sin away. And unlike the bullocks and the, off and the doves and, and the she asses and the goats, yeah, he died one time and ain't gonna die no more. Greg on it. And rather it was to follow Jesus in full obedience. Trusting in our heart that his way is the best way. Is that all right? And I hear Paul as he takes his pen and begins to write. He says, uh, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God. For he believes that they might be saved. I bear them reckon uh, that they have a zeal of God, uh, but not according to knowledge. Uh, but they being ignorant uh, of God's rightness uh, and going about uh, to establish their own righteousness, uh, have not submitted themselves uh, unto the righteousness of God. Uh, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness. Uh, to everyone who believes I'm gone now children I want to tell you if you want to live by the law then go ahead on I'm going to sit down beside grace good God Almighty are y'all praying with me and when I sit down but side grace, I'm gonna thank God that He gave me what I didn't deserve. Are y'all praying with me? Is it anybody here know what you got today? You don't deserve it, but I thank God tonight that everything I got tonight uh, it came from the Lord uh, I thank God tonight uh, that what Adam couldn't do uh, my God did it uh, way out uh, on a hill called Calvary uh, he died yes he died uh, he died uh, didn't he die oh he died until it got so dark uh, you can see your hand uh, in front of your face uh, but I thank God tonight uh, that's not the end of the story they took him down uh, put him in a borrowed tomb uh, but uh, 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 one third day morning 
in. He got her up. He got her up. He got her up. Oh. Oh. Oh, power. is in my hand I thank God that is in his hand I don't worry about trouble because he's in his hand I don't worry about sickness neither disease because it's in his hand matter of fact we're worried about this election and Isaiah told me for the government shall be upon his shoulder it's in his hand whatever you need my God God is in his hand hold on a little while longer everything is gonna be all right won't he do it somebody shout yeah won't he do it somebody shout yeah won't he do it oh yeah wouldn't have a religion I couldn't feel sometimes wouldn't have a religion I couldn't feel feel sometimes brought me all the way please don't leave me now brought me all the way please don't leave leave me now God religion I wish y'all would pray with me and I'm satisfied God Religion. Oh, oh, and I'm sad, satisfied. If I couldn't say a word, I wish y'all would help me. I just wave my hand. If I couldn't say a word. I just wave, wave my hand. Somebody give him some praise. Somebody give him some praise tonight. If you thank God for fulfilling the law, Adam messed up. When Adam sinned, he made us no longer look like God. Jesus said, I'm going to come and return the identity. Because a child ought to look like his dad. Did y'all hear what I said? And he said, I'm going to come to the earth. And when I die, I'm going to cover him with my blood. And with my blood, when the father looked on him, when he called on the father, he ain't going to see him. He's going to see my blood. And all he got to do is put a stamp on it and say in Jesus' name.
good God Almighty. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The doors of the church is open. The doors of our Father's house is open. Won't you come? As these children come to the front, tonight is a good night for you. Amen. This Monday night, it could be your night. Amen. You don't have to go home the same way you came. Amen. Won't you come now? Won't you come while the blood is running warm in your vein? Won't you come? My God. Tonight is a good night to give Jesus your heart. Tonight is a good night. You tried the rest, now try the best. Tonight is your night. Won't you come? The day that you hear my voice, hard not your heart. Won't you come? Don't put this day off for tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Won't you come? We see that there is none, but yet there's still room in our Father's house. Amen. Let's give this God sent man a hand clap of praise. Did not our hearts burn tonight? It is your zeal according to knowledge. My God. Amen. I, 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 had to, I had to keep letting him know. Tonight just Monday, man. What you doing? I had to let him know, man. It's Monday. This, this is Wednesday. What you doing, doc? Amen. Amen. It's this Monday night, not Wednesday. Amen. Say something for tomorrow and Wednesday, doc. But, but tomorrow and Wednesday ain't promised to us. Amen. Old people say, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to give it all I can. This may be my last time. I, I don't know. It may be the last time you hear me preach. I, I don't know. I don't. I might not make it home, but if it's my last time, I'm going out with a bang. Amen. I'm going out with a bang. Amen. Because he's been good to me. He's been good to me. He's been good to me. Amen. Amen. Thank God for your pastor, Harley. Man, my God, my God, my God. Hey man, I done heard, I done heard him preach a many times. But this joker here done climbed the ladder. God got him, man, God is elevating you, doc. God is elevating you, man. I, man, I tell you, God is elevating you, man. Hey, man, and, and I say this, if you don't see no growth in your pastor, man, you might need to start searching and checking and asking questions. Hey, man, you ought to see some growth. Hey, man, the Holy Spirit don't let you stay the same. I wish I had some help in here. I thank God for grace. Because new grace, new mercy. Amen. Every day I wake up, I got new grace. And y'all can say what you want to say. I got new grace. I ain't under the law. You can be, you can be up under, but I got new grace. Every day I open my eyes, I got new grace and new mercy. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Holly. Man, your zeal according to knowledge. Man, thank you, man. We had an awesome time tonight. I would not hold you all any longer. Amen. I want y'all to come back tomorrow night. Tell somebody that the Holy Spirit is at St. Stephen. And if you want to be revived, get here. Get here. Get here. Go tell somebody that hey, you need to come out to St. Stephen Baptist Church because this Holy Spirit is working in that place. Amen. We thank God tonight. We thank God. Pilgrim Rest, God bless you all. We love you. We love you. Amen. St. Stephen, we in the house. Amen. Thank you all so much, St. Stephen. Amen. Thank God for these pastors. Amen. All these pastors, these preachers. Amen. These evangelists. And thank God for all of you all. Amen. We look forward to seeing you all on tomorrow night. Tell somebody. Amen. About our revival. Amen. Thank God for our youth. Let's give our youth a hand clap of praise. Amen. This great pastor coming back in his own way. Amen. And he do it how he want to do it. He at home. These next two nights after tonight. And then, and then you looking at me. 
<laughs> I ain't gonna stay no longer. <laughs> Let us all stand. I want to take time to say thank you, but I don't want to talk a lot because I want you to leave with the message fresh on your heart. I want to thank you, St. Stephen's, for receiving us. Amen. I want to thank you, Pilgrim Rest, for showing up. Amen. 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 Thank you, pastors, preachers, every one of you, choir, thank you so much for everything. Musicians, wonderful job. Amen. Pastor Hogg is a great host, and I really appreciate him. Amen. We really appreciate him for his hospitality. We thank God for his wife. Amen. 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 Sister Holly, did I do all right? All right. <laughs> Amen. So she says it's, it's all right now. If she says it's all right, I was all right. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you. Thank you. It was nothing wrong with the law, but thank you that you gave us grace. Thank you, Father. You are holy God. You are righteous God. And Father, you desire the righteousness of your people. Father, we pray that you would just teach us earnestly how to be more and more like you. But help us to do it by faith. Trusting in that, that finished work of the cross. Because at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I'm happy all the day. Lord, we pray that you would dismiss us from this place, but never from your holy presence. In Jesus' almighty name, amen. And thank God.